Good morning. Welcome to God's House for Worship. Welcome to everyone joining online today. What a joy to be together here in God's house and, and here online as the Lord feeds us with his word today. Uh, welcome, everyone. A few announcements as we get started this morning. Uh, obviously, we're under some new protocol as far as uh, masks and social distancing and all those things. Uh, just uh, continue to ask that as we all make decisions along those lines that we just treat each other with love and respect as far as decisions made for wearing or not. Uh, we all know what the guidelines are from the state, and we'll just follow those appropriately. Uh, a few announcements here. Uh, if you're in the building today, there's two red tables in the back uh, with resources. One of them has uh, some great things to read. The Lutheran LWML Quarterly Magazine is back there, a magazine called Lutheran Life, which is a, a, a good read about our life as Lutherans uh, back there. Also, there's a table with... Uh, study sheets for today's Bible study, and then a new adult study starting next week. It's called Provoking Proverbs, uh, Wisdom, and the Ten Commandments. It's a nice blend of looking at the Proverbs and the Commandments together. I'll be leading that study starting next week, so if you're here uh, and you want to be a part of that study, uh, it is going to continue online, so grab a book on your way out. Uh, if you're at home and would like one, just let me know. Give me a call or an email. I'll either be here for you to stop by and get it, or if you want me to bring it over to your place, I'll just drop it off for you. So, uh, those are available in the back. Uh, also here, it's not too bad heat-wise, but if you get overheated and too hot, the air conditioning in my office is on, okay? So if you need somewhere to sit and cool down, please feel free. Don't have any apprehension about that at all. There's comfy chairs in there. Just go take a seat and, and cool off a little bit. Uh, one other announcement, our voters meeting uh, originally scheduled for June 20th, two weeks from today. We're moving it back a week to the 27th. Uh, June 20th is Father's Day, and so we don't really want to uh, schedule something on top of that. Uh, we would never think of scheduling a voters meeting on Mother's Day, so I don't think we should on Father's Day either because fathers are important as well. So uh, let's uh, reserve that time for families if people want that. So we'll move our voters meeting to the next week, June 27th. Uh, so look for all the information coming out on that. Having said those things, it's great to be together and online together. Our order of worship today is Divine Service Setting 4. If you have a hymnal at home, it's page 203. And we will uh, continue with uh, the printed bulletins here. Uh, God bless you. As we gather together, we are, are blessed to have Catherine back and, and playing organ today as well. So what a joy that is. Uh, so let's begin. We stand as we sing together our opening hymn. Uh, just that we gather today. Cheers. 
beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together to confess our sins. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our psalm this morning. It is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We join together to lift our voices in prayer and praise with the Kyrie and Gloria this morning.
pray. Almighty and eternal God, your son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. May be seated as we turn our attention to the assigned readings this morning. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from Genesis, the third chapter, beginning at verse 8. And these words from Genesis will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning as well. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, verses 4 and 5. We begin at verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal." For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we hear from the Holy Gospel today and as we sing together our Alleluia and verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided... He cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And the crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is our joy to confess together our common faith. We do so today with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated as we join together in our hymn of the day, Amazing Grace. Shield and hold. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our text for our message today is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. The end of that section today, the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is our text this morning. This text, this Old Testament lesson from Genesis, the account of the fall into sin and its eternal consequences, is probably one of those Bible stories that you know well. It's a familiar story of a significantly serious matter, a matter of eternal life or death. When Adam and Eve chose to listen to the lies of Satan and eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, doing what God had commanded them not to do, guilt and shame entered into their life. And now there was a disconnect There was distance. No longer were they comfortable even being in the presence of God. So they hid. They hid from God because they heard him coming. They hid from God because they knew he was walking in the garden nearby. They hid from God because they were afraid. Just as Satan said it would happen, When they ate of the fruit, their eyes were open to the knowledge of good and evil. In that eye-opening, Adam and Eve thought that they would be like God. But what they saw was something very different. They saw their nakedness. They saw their guilt. They saw their shame. And they saw their sin. Everything had changed. And they were lost. And that's where they would have stayed if God had not searched them out. And that's where they would have remained if God had not chosen to find them. Adam and Eve would have been lost forever in sin and doomed to eternal death. They were running from God and and Satan was running with them. God could have let them go. He could have let them be lost. He could have left them to be doomed. But that's not who our God is. And so he didn't do that. Instead, he approached Adam and Eve in their running and in their hiding, and he went to them and sought them out and found them and talked with them. He sought out his crown of creation, humanity itself. He asked them what happened. He gave them the opportunity to come clean. God opened the door for Adam and Eve to come in and confess their sins before their heavenly father. He said, hey, come tell me what went down over there by the tree. Let's talk about this. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat from? What is this that you have done? God asks. 
I hear those questions and I have to just pause for a minute and say, hold on. God, who knows everything, is asking the questions. God, who already knows the answers, is asking the question. It's kind of like when you're a kid, right? And you break something and you feel bad about it. You eat something you're not supposed to eat. You go into your brother or sister's room and touch something that they specifically told you not to touch. And now you're busted. (laughs) You're holding the broken pieces in your hand. There's crumbs on your cheek. And your brother and sister know that things are not the way that they left them. Your palms begin to sweat. Your heart is beating out of your chest. And and you start to stumble over your words as as you're trying to talk. And, and of course, when you get the words out, you you come clean and you confess, right? Maybe not. (laughs) Maybe, just maybe, we act like Adam and Eve. And we're quick. And we run. And we hide. And if we get caught, we point the finger over there at somebody else. It's their fault. When God questioned Adam and Eve, we got to hear the very first excuses in the history of the world from Adam. The woman that you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree. Adam is blaming Eve, but did you notice who else he's blaming? He's blaming God, too. You gave her to me from Eve. The serpent deceived me, and I ate Eve is blaming Satan. It's the old, the devil made me do it, right? Right there in the beginning, the very first excuses in the history of the world. But unfortunately, they were not the last. We've all learned too well from our sinful parents there in the garden. We're fond of making excuses too. We're pretty good at ducking responsibility and accountability too. We're quick to blame others when we get caught red-handed, too. And the sad thing is that none of those reactions to sin are a solution to sin. With those excuses, we simply stay lost, hopelessly lost, in need of being found. That's where Adam and Eve were. That's where they found themselves. And that's where we end up, too in the midst of our excuses and our ducking responsibility and our blaming others. And it's a serious matter because it's a sin matter. But you know, there's so many people in our world today that don't see it that way. The seriousness of sin. It's so often downplayed in our world today. Well, that was just maybe a little error in judgment. That was kind of a mistake. That was a a misinformed decision. You and I know it's no longer PC to call sin, sin. That's judgment. That's infringing on me wanting to live my life the way I want to live it. That's not very loving, and you call yourself a Christian. But in his word, God makes it very clear what sin is. He makes it very clear that every sin offends him. He makes it very clear that every sin separates us from him and that every sin leads to death. And if we were really to take it as serious as God says it is, we'd take that mild label off the sin bottle, right, and put the poison label back on because that's what sin is. It's poison. It's poison that ruins our relationships, that paralyzes our peace, that handcuffs our hope, that that jams up our joy that we want to have in Jesus. Bottom line, sin wrecks our life on earth and it destroys our life for eternity. So what do we do? Do we stay in our sinful despair and continue to run from God as fast as we can? If so, guess what? You're going to be running forever. Because that kind of running will never get you to a place of true peace and joy. We need to find a different kind of running. A running that goes with purpose, taking us right back to God. Or maybe, maybe we just need to stop running and stop moving and be still. Be still and know that he is God and that he is still in control. 
It's then that you will see, even in your running away from God, you know what God's been doing? He's been running right after you, and he's right there with you. Just as God reached out to Adam and Eve, so he reaches out to you too. Just as he sought out Adam and Eve, so he seeks you out too. You see, God would not let sin have the final word in his creation and in his world. He intervened in mercy and grace with a solution to sin and its eternal consequences. Like Adam and Eve, we too were once lost, but now we're found. Found by God's grace, his amazing grace that we just sang about. You see, in baptism, God calls you by name. In that water and that word, he confronts your sin and he gives you his spirit that gives you that forgiveness and strength and life in him. All of that keeping with his precious promise there in the garden. It was there that, vow, that God vowed to put enmity between Satan and the woman. It was there that God quickly demonstrated that he was still in control. Just after Adam and Eve ate that fruit and sin entered into the world, God revealed his plan for the payment for that sin. A payment would be made by a savior sent to destroy the devil's work. God promised to send that savior as the seed of the woman conceived by the Holy Spirit. That savior would be his one and only beloved son. That was his promise and that's what he did. Yet we know that Satan would not give up, right? As Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, Satan worked even harder. At the time of, his, of Jesus' birth, Satan convinced Herod that this child was after his throne and that he needed to be killed. Just as Jesus' ministry began, Satan went on the attack. He went after Jesus as he'd been fasting in the wilderness for 40 days. He went after him and tried to convince him, tempted Jesus to use his power to test his father, to go after and desire the glamours of the kingdoms of the world. Throughout Jesus' ministry, Satan wouldn't stop. He continually tried to convince people that Jesus was a threat to them. Then as Jesus' earthly ministry drew to a close, he'd try again. Satan would go after Jesus. During the events of Holy Week, he tried to turn Jesus from the plan that God had laid out for him, the plan that was necessary for sin and death and Satan to be conquered. But on Good Friday... The devil endured his final defeat. That battle that began with a tree in the Garden of Eden was finished on a tree outside of Jerusalem. Yes, indeed, the serpent struck at Jesus' heel, and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then in his dying breath, Jesus proclaimed, It is finished, and crushed Satan forever. At the right time, in God's time, his first promise was fulfilled. Jesus proved to be the solution to sin and death. He offered himself as the atoning sacrifice, taking the sins of Adam and Eve and every human being to the cross. There he suffered the eternal consequences for our sin. There he suffered for every excuse we've ever made. He suffered for every time that we've ducked responsibility. He suffered for every time we blamed someone else for the sin that was in our lives. And he paid the price for it all. He covered over our guilt and shame with his blood shed for you and me. What great confidence we can have in this gospel promise fulfilled for you and me. We no longer have to hide from God in our sin. We can keep running, but not running away from God, but running to him in repentance. And in that, we will have great joy because forgiveness is ours in Jesus. Just as the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem to see the baby born, 
Just as the prodigal son went and returned to his father, just as the women ran from the tomb to tell the others the good news of the angel that Christ is risen, he is no longer here, just as Peter and John ran quickly back to that tomb to see it empty where their crucified Savior had once lain, we too run with purpose. We run, as Paul says, to press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call in Jesus Christ. We are led to run, run in our faith by the Spirit of Christ, strengthened by him alone, strengthened to run to those nail-pierced hands and those open arms of love of Jesus that are there and always ready to receive us and wrap us in his forgiveness and in his love. Whether you're tempted to take sin lightly or you find yourself crushed by guilt and shame, God invites you to come to him, to run to him and receive his forgiveness and love and the true peace and joy that comes in him. God kept his promise to Adam and Eve and to all mankind to send that savior. And he will keep every promise that he has made to you and me because God is faithful. By mercy, you have been found. By grace you have been saved. Forgiveness and eternal life is yours through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our worship continues this morning as we approach the throne of our Lord's grace and mercy with our prayers. I invite you to stand as we pray together. Included in the prayers today, we have a few additions this morning. Um, we'll be lifting up two different families who are mourning the, the death of loved ones. Uh, the Berg family, Mike and Sharon's sister-in-law, Molly, who we've been praying for, uh, passed away this week. So we'll be praying uh, for her family, uh, husband Bill, Emily, and Justin, uh, the children, and of course the Berg family. Also, one of our members, Yvette Rasmussen, her son Neil, suddenly passed away this week, this past week. So we'll be lifting up Yvette and her family uh, in our prayers today as well. And we also have prayers for healing today for three different people. Uh, Lily Berg, uh, Mike and Sharon's granddaughter, uh, healing after an uh, accident at work. Uh, also for Denise, a friend of Andrea's, uh, diagnosed with MS, we'll be praying for her. And also Dale, who is Richard Krause's brother, uh, who is hospitalized but is improving, but we'll pray for Dale and, and his uh, improved health and healing as well. So all of those things, as well as those we've been praying for and the, the matters that are on your hearts today, we bring to the throne of our Lord's grace and mercy. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confession for the sake of your grace and promising deliverance from sin and its curse, so comfort us by the forgiveness of sins and give us hope in the promise of eternal life and your new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage to your church, O Lord, that as we believe, so we also would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope we have in him, that we too will be raised and brought into his presence. Embolden us by your spirit to confess this Christian faith, that for Christ's sake, mercy and grace may extend to the lost, that they may be found and receive the Lord's forgiveness and love, his peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, your son was rejected on earth, even by his friends and relatives. Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth. Assure them that their stand for your truth is necessary. Guard them from seeking a false or easier peace and turn us all in every earthly disappointment toward the truth of your promises in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, no kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation and its government. Frustrate the work of Satan and the seeds of destruction he would sow. Unite our leaders and our people for the common good. 
while leading us to hope in the eternal kingdom that is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly life. We especially lift to you this day Bruce and Bud and Betsy and Al, Annetta and Brigitta, Deborah and Wayne Johnson, Sally and Gary and Tony, Annette and Emily, Don and Jimmy, David and Mrs. Wong, Joyce and Rick and Kevin, Sid and Ken and Joanne and Scott, Laureen and Ingo and Diana, Vera and Betty, Martha and Nick, Kevin and Janet, Beth and Sarah, Denise and Dale and Fred, Ted and Lily. Do not let them lose heart as you bring healing according to your will and as you give them strength in their affliction. By this earthly affliction, prepare them for an eternal glory beyond all comparison. We also ask you to graciously abide with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially the family and friends of Molly and of Neil. Wrap them in your presence, your comfort, and your peace. Assure them of the certain promise of a joyful reunion in eternity with Christ for all who live and die in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your son's cross, his body and blood shed and given for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith, that in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, what was lost in paradise has been regained by the conquering wounds of your Son, crucified and raised again. In him we are restored as your children and made bold to ask for every need. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. May be seated as we sing together. Praise to you in adoration. Just yeah. 